working for you. Fox 2 News at 6 starts now. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the HD Show. I'm Dave Spencer. And if you watched this morning, you probably saw where my co-anchor was. She was anchoring the morning. She did a great job. So uh, just me tonight, but I can assure you I'm not alone. It's been a beautiful start to the weekend so far. We've had some clear skies, low humidity. That's all great news. So let's check in with Fox 2 meteorologist Stephanie Mead to see how the rest of the weekend will look. Stephanie. Sure, yeah. So we did have actually a really nice day today. Right now that we are increasing cloud cover for a lot of spots and rain really not too far away from us. At the moment, daytime highs today topped out in the mid to upper 70s for a lot of us here. 77 Mount Pleasant this afternoon, 75 in Lansing. We topped out at 77 here in Detroit, 78 out near Muskegon. So western parts of the state, maybe just slightly warmer, but not by a whole lot. Right now, with the rain, temperatures in western parts of the state significantly cooler. Traverse City extending all the way down to South Haven. Notice mainly in the middle 60s. We're in the mid 70s right now with that increase in cloud cover and clearly seeing that at the moment. This is a live look from our downtown camera looking live over Detroit, mainly cloudy skies at the moment. And you notice showers not too far away from us here. We have showers from Cadillac extending now into parts of Lansing, down near parts of Lenaway and Monroe County. So again, not too far away from us at the moment. So I would anticipate by mid evening, everyone's going to be picking up on those shower chances. Luckily, once the system kind of passes eastbound, we should begin to dry out and that could happen as early as tomorrow morning. So here's our future cast model by 830, 9 o'clock tonight. Notice here we see the leading edge of that rain just outside of downtown that will pass through overnight by around eight nine o'clock tomorrow morning. The steadier shower chances will begin to move eastward, but we do have that isolated shower chance taking us through the afternoon. So lunchtime, although we do see a lot of dry time, I would at least anticipate seeing that isolated to spotty shower pop. And then by Sunday evening, we should begin to see that moisture all move eastbound tonight. Temperatures will dip into the mid 60s, so even a little bit milder than what we woke up to this morning. Shower chances will be with us too. Lows will bottom out low 60s. And then tomorrow with the rain chances around, temps are going to be a little bit cooler. I think a lot of us will be in the low to mid 70s. Morning shower chances, that'll give way to cloudy skies, I think, through a good portion of the afternoon. That isolated shower chance, again, not out of the question. And that could have an impact on races tomorrow. We do have the Detroit Grand Prix. It starts tomorrow morning, so that spotty rain chance that will most certainly be there. Temperatures by noon, low 70s. Showers become a bit more few and far between by four. We should be in the mid 70s. After that, next week looks very unsettled. We have that daily rain chance Tuesday, Wednesday into Thursday. With that, too, we see warmer air overhead. By Tuesday, we'll be in the mid 80s. And then that scattered shower with thunderstorm chance will continue pretty much through about this time next week with highs cooling into the lower 70s. Dave. Stephanie, thank you. Well, there's nothing too crazy on that radar, but as temperatures start to jump during these warm months in Michigan, so do the energy bills. This weekend marks the start of DTE's summer peak rate. That means customers can expect to pay around 22 cents more an hour for energy use. That's between 3 and 7 p.m. weekdays from now through September. The bottom line, doing your dishes, doing some laundry, or running the A.C. will likely cost you more during that four-hour window. Consumer energy customers can also expect to pay 21 cents more from 2 to 7 also through September. Well, fallout continues for former President Donald Trump just days after his hush money conviction. But Trump, he has a message for his supporters urging them to focus on the upcoming election. Fox's Connor Hansen reports now from New York. Former President Trump drawing a crowd outside Trump Tower here today where he made a speech about his historic conviction. But now that he's not stuck in New York City every day, he'll be heading back out onto the campaign trail. This is a scam. There's a rigged trial. Former President Donald Trump railing against the trial after a jury found him guilty on 34 felony counts. In a speech from the White House, President Biden criticized his presidential rival. It's reckless. It's dangerous. It's irresponsible for anyone to say this was rigged just because they don't like the verdict. The historic verdict made Trump the first former president to become a convicted felon. It's stirring debate across party lines as to whether the outcome was politically motivated. What I see is that if this is now a partisan tool, then you go from a a constitutional republic to a banana republic very quickly. Trump pledging to appeal the verdict, but shifting focus to the November election. Remember, November 5th is the most important day in the history 
of our country. His campaign announcing a haul of more than $34 million in the first six hours after the verdict was announced. The fact is that we had so much uh, traffic that it actually crashed our website. With we Trump's sentencing less than six weeks away, questions are mounting about what it could mean for his re-election campaign. The next thing I think the country is going to be waiting for is that. And what does prison for a former president look like? It could be down in Fort Bragg in a room. We don't no. Trump heads to California next week for campaign fundraisers in San Francisco, Beverly Hills, and Newport Beach. In New York, Connor Hansen, Fox 2 News. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has been invited to the nation's capital. This comes as the war-torn country has proposed a new ceasefire agreement with Hamas. The three-phase plan includes a full pause in fighting for up to six weeks, the release of hostages, and the reconstruction of Gaza. President Biden says Hamas is not capable of carrying out another large-scale attack on Israel. Lawmakers from both parties invited Netanyahu to speak at the Capitol, but it's unclear whether he'll do so or not. Now, we have a big freeway closure this weekend in Macomb County. M-53 is shut down from 18-mile to M-59, which is Hall Road. This will allow crews to demolish the deck on the Clinton River Road Bridge. Northbound M53 won't reopen until 1 p.m. on Monday. The southbound lanes will stay closed until late June. It was a violent start to the weekend in one Detroit neighborhood. Two teens were gunned down. As Fox 2's Lauren Edwards tells us, this isn't the first time. This particular street has been on the law enforcement's radar. Two teenagers shot earlier this afternoon. Police say that the shooting was fortunately non-fatal, but take a look at the scene. The double shooting happened over on Robson Street near Linden Street around 6 this evening. Detroit police blocked off Robson for hours investigating the scene. There were a number of people, especially teenagers, out and about in that scene area, walking around on the street as well. I spoke with a few neighbors who did not want to speak on camera, but say it's the third or fourth time over the last few weeks that police have come to that area. They say the violent activity has increased over the last few weeks. Now, police have not released the ages of the teens, but they say the investigation is ongoing. And when I ask about their conditions, they say it is unknown at this time. Reporting in Detroit, Lauren Edwards, Fox 2 News. Now to the story you heard Stephanie mention earlier, the Motor City living up to its name this weekend. Race cars whipping around downtown Detroit. Fox 2's Scott Wolchek was trackside and takes us to the action for the Detroit Grand Prix. Day two of Grand Prix underway and cars whipping around that turn here at Atwater Street. Tons of excitement in the air. Talk about feel the need for speed. The energy is absolutely amazing. I mean, this is the best weekend of the entire year. Because downtown Detroit is bustling. Its streets transformed into a racetrack, bringing fans from across the world to the Motor City. It's kind of just surreal to see the cars in person, see how big they actually are, how loud they are. Also amazing how hard and fast these pit crews work, gearing up for today's qualifying round. They are perfecting their engines, they're perfecting their cars, they're, they're tuning it up. And Anna Buskwert is tuning in because she's been volunteering at Detroit's Grand Prix since 1992. We're in the mix of things because all the race cars come through this gate to get out on the track. I think it's awesome. Juliana, her little brother Nico, and her mom Nicole coming from Midland to meet their favorite drivers and get autographs. Who do you want to see the most? Bad door! It's now a tradition. We're going to be here every year. Very nice. I mean, we, oh, no. last year they got to meet a lot of the drivers and having this experience of meeting them is great. And then there's the Swedish fans. We really love Detroit. Yeah, you like to you like to travel out, yeah. out here? Yes, yes, yes. We follow Marcus Eriksson. Rogan ain't kidding. His brother is rocking this patriotic outfit, and they even brought their flag that Eriksson signs at every event. To the Swedes, you guys love racing? Yes. Very nice. Racing is life. Especially in the heart of Detroit. Reporting from downtown, Scott Walchek, Fox 2 News. And here's hoping the rain will hold off long enough for them to get another race in tomorrow. 
All right, new research shows Alzheimer's is literally costing Americans money, but now there's hope thanks to a recent study done at the University of Michigan. The research shows that symptoms of cognitive decline may actually show up years before any diagnosis. It started a decade ago, a conversation between Joanne Shu, a researcher at the University of Michigan, and Dr. Kenneth Langham, a physician at the same university. And as I uh, talk to um, physicians and people who um, work with a lot of elders, I discovered that this was no surprise to people. On the surface, it seemed like common sense. But could this theory be proven? Is there a link between dementia and your finances. While we think of Alzheimer's as something that affects your memory, your ability to recognize your family members, in fact, one of the first skills to deteriorate under Alzheimer's is your ability to manage money. The study tracked 90,000 older adults over a 20-year period, looking at health records and credit scores, insurance and Medicare claims. You can start seeing the separation in these big data sets um, where we're uh, tracking people's uh, credit ratings and things like that. Uh, they seem to start uh, um, you know, getting different up to six and a half or, or seven years uh, before, um, which again, I, I think is was surprising. That could mean up to seven years of missed credit card or mortgage payments before anyone in the household or other family members have any idea something is wrong. The results can be catastrophic, uh, obviously, if uh, if they get involved in scams or, or people take advantage of them. The question then became, what can we do with this information? There are early signs, and if you um, can get your family together to come up with some sort of plan um, on how you want to manage your finances, and even better, to get yourself to a doctor um, a little bit earlier, then there are lots of interventions, both on the health side as well as the financial side. The research found baked-in privacy barriers. This balance of privacy versus um, early detection. Rarely do financial and medical worlds interact. At this time, there isn't really any way for a bank, for example, to alert a doctor that, you know, we're seeing some strange transactions here that might signal some um, diminished capacity to make judgments um, about your finances. And when's the last time you had a financial discussion with your doctor? Right. Probably never. We do want to prevent these financial nightmares and uh, exploitation and scams. So I do think there's, there's more policy discussions going on. Um, state and federal federal levels and in the uh, in the finance world so and i do think this article has uh, kind of added to um, some of the information and, and maybe move those discussions along so that is where they are now taking aim looking to lawmakers to help bridge a perceived gap and give families time to act before it's too late policymakers could potentially uh, work towards a way that you know to, to think about how we can preserve privacy, but also enable enough information sharing um, to improve both the health and the economic outcomes of American families. This particular study was published by the Federal Reserve, and according to the research, nearly 12 million people will be affected by some form of dementia by the year 2050. All right, well, that's going to do it for this installment of the HD Show, but make sure you tune in tonight. We're coming in after baseball, we're going to have so much more for you, including a, a Crime Stoppers report. I know Camille Amiri has been working on a violent start to this weekend that we're seeing already, plus all your sports, a shakeup at the Pistons, and the Tigers are in action right now. Make sure you watch us close to 10 o'clock. We'll see you then.